the, the, the whole debacle at the at the border. Everything now is causing people to awaken. So every community now is saying, I got something to lose in this if we don't stand together. Hello, friends. Welcome to the YouTube channel. You here with Pastor James Devalon. I got a good one for you today. This is a minister. I know his skin color doesn't matter, but in this, you know, in this political discussion, we always have to tell what skin color they are. Right? A black minister. So there you go. He is going to say a number of things here that are actually beautiful to listen to. Balance. Well thought out. This man knows his stuff again. You got to enjoy this video. Link in the description below. Like and subscribe to the page. Click the bell icon for more. Whew. Let's spend some time together listening to this because this is going to be really good. Oh, yeah, baby. Let's dial in. So the Constitution was not written for uh, immoral, unjust people. The Constitution was written for moral, spiritual people who mm. could discern the times and the seasons through the Word of God. MAGA Black, I know the plight that's going on in the inner cities, inside, the, <laughs> behind the... MAGA Black, uh, did you guys watch the video that I put out about uh, the, the, those rappers that, that went out, that went completely crazy? Uh, la, la, you say Trump Latinos? Yeah. Black MAGA, 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 Donald Trump, yeah, that's my president. <laughs> Donald Trump, the first black president. Black MAGA? <laughs> anyway. Yeah, same thing. It's, this is a movement. I don't know how they're going to stop this one. Let's keep moving. Scenes as a pastor for 22 years. There is nowhere else to go but to come back home. I'm talking to the black community. Back home to the Republican Party because that's what has to happen. That Republican Party, if I can play, you know, the reporter pushing back, that Republican Party is different than the one that they left, right? Yeah. That's why MAGA Black, we're talking about the policies that make sense, the policies that brought us together. Uh, it just so happened it was under that brash New Yorker, some guy named Trump, I, you know, heard of him. <laughs> but but it was really what worked. Where's a white shirt and a red tie, if I'm not mistaken? Oh, my God. But it's what worked. Uh, cutting taxes, lowering uh, the unemployment, raising employment. These things actually worked. Peace through strength. Everything that was done in our foreign trade, uh, building up our military, all of those things worked. That's the Republican Party I'm talking about, America first. That's what has to happen. I'm not talking about this rhino Republican Party. I'm talking about the Republican Party that freed the slaves, the party of Lincoln. We're, we're, we're talking about the party that when, when the slaves got out mm -hmm. and they said, where we go? The first Republican black Congress was <laughs> initiated. That's the Republican Party I'm go. talking about, the party of Frederick Douglass. Yeah. That's the party. Why then are Powerful. so many of our modern black leaders, deceased and living, why were they more associated with the Democratic Party? I'm not talking about in the 60s. I'm not talking about in the 70s or the 80s. I'm talking about now. I'm talking about John Lewis. I'm talking about Andrew Young and Julian Bond. I'm talking about Don McEachin, who we just talked about. Maybe Adam Clayton Powell takes us a little farther back, but you look at Benjamin Hooks. You, you know all the people I'm talking about. Why are they so associated with the Democratic Party? Why do they not see that that's where the Democratic Party I think one of the answers to that could be is because the Dems have managed to turn call everything that is Republican racism and a lot of black folks especially during a time of different racial tensions could easily sway emotionally and I think that's kind of what happened to a lot of these men instead of looking at the facts they made emotional decisions because they you know they think Republicans are all racist which is not true and they just, there's racism everywhere. There's racism everywhere, right? But, um, yeah, I think that's part of the answer I would have given. But let me see what he has to say. Is why the Democratic modern Democratic Party gave us first African-American president. We have the first African-American female vice president. Seems like that would be reason to celebrate. Well, it goes back to family again. What was the family really all about? The family was about hard work, go to school, pay your bills, stay out of trouble, and... The Democrat Party, if we really look real close, did the opposite. Massive incarceration, uh, totally indoctrinating our kids through 
things like CRT. Let's be fair. CRT is the emperor's new clothes, right? It's been taught by a couple of teachers in a couple of schools yeah. in, a, in a country of over 300 million people, right? That's not a, 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 an epidemic. Yeah, well, what happened was when it started saying that white men are the problem and black people will always be oppressed, that's an issue in a country called the United States of America. Of course it's an issue, but it's not an issue because it's so isolated in little places where it's yeah. happened. Just like if there's somebody teaching a class that flies in the face of the Constitution, says the Constitution's a fake document. I'm not saying that exists, but if one person's doing it in the middle of Iowa, that's not a problem in America. Well, what happened was that the division anywhere can become division everywhere. Oh, uh oh. So, say, uh, say, as a pastor, say that again. Say that again. Sounds like something the Bible says, a little leaven, leaven of the whole lump, right? Anyway, let's keep listening. Say that again. Well, that's not a problem in America. Well, what happened was that the division anywhere can become division everywhere. Exactly. So uh, as a pastor, it's a little leaven, leaven's a whole lump. So it's uh. the little things. <laughs> I didn't even get to watch this, by the way. It came across my screen and I said, I'm going to react to it. Yeah, there you go. There was the verse. So uh, as a pastor, it's a little leaven, leaven's a whole lump. So it's the little things that we ignore, mm -hmm. that keep a mountain and surmounting itself, mm -hmm. now it becomes an obstruction. It mm -hmm. becomes an obstacle. And we allow these things, these little things to continue. Now we're dealing with a Goliath. Mm -hmm. So now we have to take down the giants, the giants of technology, <laughs> the, the, the giants of what we call the uniparty. And mm -hmm. so here we are. Now we have to really mean it that if we're going to uh, be uh, solid, and form solidarities now has to happen. So that, that's what MAGA is really all about now. But do you see MAGA as uniting? I mean, certainly it unites people behind it and its idea and this candidate. A lot of people say it's a cult. It's a cult of personality, you know? <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> I've heard that before, but always. And I have people here, Pastor, who are mm -hmm. saying to me that they would take a bullet for Donald Trump. He's not the president. He's mm -hmm. not you know, that, that's, that's unusual. You don't hear that a lot. This is what has happened. All of the atrocities, the calamities, the, 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 the whole debacle at the, at the border, everything now is causing people to awaken to what America is really all about. So this awakening now is taking on personal interests. So every community now is saying, I got something to lose in this if we don't stand together. And so that's what we're seeing. When, when a person says that, that's a personal interest. He's saying, yeah, and you know, everybody's not willing to die for anybody. But there are some who will say, it's, it's that cause right now. That's what Patrick Henry said. Give me liberty or give me death. And now that we're hearing it again, it sounds to some foreign, but this is in the roots of this country. This is what America's all about. These, these men came from farmers and, and business people, and most of them were just, just wanting things to be better who fought for this nation back in 1776. You're talking about awakening. Part of awakening is woke, right? People talking about woke. What does that mean to you? What does the word woke mean? Well, <laughs> woke, woke is a, a false mm. idea of awakening. Yep. It, it does everything opposite of awakening, which is a revival, which comes from a spiritual stirring of one's consciousness. And so if you have a lot of dirt, you know, in your mind, a lot of diluted or polluted things, what a revival does is shake the trees again mm -hmm. so that now you can begin to see clearly. But what woke does, woke gives a, a, a false assimilation mm -hmm. of action. Mm. Okay, I'm woke. Well, any, it, it doesn't give action. Define it. What, what is woke? It, it, it tells you what cannot work. <laughs> what will not work in a exactly. people of community. Right, but tell me what it is, though. If I say I'm a man, and then I say all of a sudden I identify as a woman, that's woke. I mean, it, it, it has so, so many definition, different definitions for different people, you know what I'm saying? So it's more than just this idea that I'm awakened to, the, to racism and all kind of discrimination. That's what it means to be woke. Well, sometimes what it means to be woke is to be trans. What it means to be woke is to be black. What it means to be woke is to be part of these intersectionalities and so on so it, it's like there is like really a there isn't really a concrete definition of it but a lot of what's behind wokeism is anti-whiteism so it's like it's divisive <laughs> it's like it's really divisive it, it creates more of an environment that is against white people it's like a regressive form of racism than than anything it just has a nice flow to it but when you dig into 
what is at the heart of the woke ideology is is really racism. And again, that's what the Democratic Party has been pushing for years, right? That's it. It 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 gives demonstration of the total opposite of freedom, liberty, consciousness, all of those things. Woke actually shuts down, so it pretends its eyes are open, but their eyes are really asleep. And so when a person says that illegal immigration is cool, that's woke. Why is that woke? It's woke because we know a nation cannot survive off of bringing la de dadi I'm being crazy now, but la de dadi and everybody into the country. A nation cannot remain sovereign if it keeps its borders open. And why do we expect America to do it when all these other nations, other places, close and shut their borders? Isn't feeding your exactly. tired, your poor, your hungry, exactly. isn't that both a part of someone yeah. of the cloth as well as part of the, the Statue of Liberty? Yeah, but it's in the context of righteousness. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a nation that is not lifted up, if, 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 if it is exalted, it says righteousness exalts a nation. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. It means doing things right. Mm -hmm. or the right way, or God's way of doing things. But sin is a reproach to To many many people. people. So if I say, give me your poor, give me your foreign, you know, it was under the understanding of when you come in, you have to become us. Okay, but who Mm. defines sin, right? I mean, some people, for some people, it's a sin to say, to build a wall and say you can't come up. Who defines sin? God does. Anyway, let's keep going. Over it. To some people, it's a sin to let that person in without checking their papers and giving them due process. I mean, who's to define it? Well, I went to that class. Um, God defines what sin is. Amen now. And and so as a Christian (laughs) nation, a Christian Judeo nation, we cannot lose our roots in that in understanding that the word of God is the infallible word of doctrine and truth. What if you're a Muslim in this country? What if you're an atheist? What if you're a Jew? What if you are Sikh or Hindu? You know, one's precepts of religion are different than yours, different than mine, different than hers. Well, Mm. this is what I love about this nation. Our founding fathers put together what is called the U.S. Constitution, the First Amendment, uh, the the freedom of what? Religion. Mm -hmm. Um, it, It did that without, what, wanting people to assimilate into a religion Mm -hmm. that controlled the people true and this nation was always designed to evangelize Mm -hmm. even those that don't agree with us that's a good point and and so disagreement does not mean disunity Mm. it just means an opportunity for us to come together that's why Mm. it's called a more perfect union our founding fathers knew like benjamin franklin came out of the halls of uh, of philly constitutional hall and the the young lady asked him what what do we got here (laughs) he says daughter a republic (laughs) if we can keep it. <laughs> exactly. And so the Constitution was not written for uh, immoral, unjust people. The mm. Constitution was written for moral, spiritual people who could discern the times and the seasons through the Word of God. I cannot believe TYT did this. This blows my mind. Shank Uger and Anna Kasparian, their channel, has put this stuff out. Wow. Somebody deserve a clap. That was amazing. This minister here knows his stuff, man. He's done his homework. He knows what he's talking about. Listen, I'm not as articulate as he is when it comes to politics. That's not where my strength my strength is. I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to understand. I'm willing to read, okay? This is why I do these videos. It's an education process for me. Uh, there's a lot to talk about here. And I think his definition of woke <laughs> is kind of like, well, there isn't really a concrete definition apart from what people can turn, make it turn, turn out to be. He's becoming a something that is so divisive in a country. He's creating more of a problem than anything positive. Um, another thing he spoke about is that this country was made, the Constitution was made for righteousness. We were supposed to be evangelizing the world. A lot has changed, right? And, and, and the reason certain things have changed and the way we behave ourselves today. We become very atheistic in our mindset and the theory of evolution. We don't believe in God anymore. We put down the Bible and now we we took up the literatures of supposed philosophers and thinkers of our society. And then we've lost our minds. Like the Bible says, the world by wisdom knew not God. Not the wisdom of God. The wisdom of men is corrupting our mindset in this country. And... But there used to be a time we used to go and send 
the, the evangelists. We used to send the missionaries throughout the world to share the gospel. Now <laughs> they're sending missionaries to us because we need to be evangelized because we've done lost our minds. We don't know our left from our rights anymore. We think men can have babies. And, and if you dare to say anything against certain group of people, you get banned and censored. And I mean, um, yeah, welcome to the new version of America. I don't like it very much. I think we do need to fight for our values in this country. Uh, but this has to be done with the right attitude, with the right spirit, right? I don't believe you can force religious ideologies down the throat of millions of people, right, in this country. Nevertheless, religious values must be protected and upheld. Here's what I'm trying to say. Any of the keeping of the last six of the, the commandments of God is good. God wrote 10 commandments on two different tables. The first four tells us how to worship God and the last six, how to love each other. Any government that enforces that, any movement to protect, do not to protect the lives of the unborn, honoring mothers and fathers, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery. Any movement to protect these values is good for a nation and our nation will prosper. But whenever we say it doesn't matter <laughs> with these values, we are setting ourselves, we are setting ourselves for a major downfall. And I think that's going on in the United States. We are experiencing a massive downfall, a spiritual downfall, and we are going to this spiral of corruption. The bleeding has to stop. <laughs> it's going to affect Jesus in the heart to stop this bleeding. One thing he also said, it's about the significance of being spiritually awakened. It's not just about being woke. Woke is just something else. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's an injustice. It's a type of aggressive racism. It's anti-whiteism really in practice. But the thing is being awakened spiritually is what is needed today. Look what the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter five. There it is. It says, wherefore awake that thou sleepest arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Jesus wants to create a revival in America. But it must be done in Americans and Americans who opens their hearts and themselves to Jesus saying, Lord Jesus, take control of my heart and make me to be a new man and save me from a life of sin. Create in me a clean heart of God and renew a right spirit within me. When we allow Jesus to penetrate the heart, then we can talk about how we're going to make a difference in our country then we can fight for the values that needs to be fought for. And I think what's lacking today is that many people are advocating for change. They themselves have yet to be changed. Many times we want the world to be a better place, but we have yet to become a better people. We have yet to allow Jesus to transform the heart, change the behavior, clean the character. That is a problem. And if we can address that problem heads on, then we have a baseline and a reason and a standard for change. One thing the minister also mentioned when the question was asked, who defines sin? Well, God defines sin and the wages of sin is death. We are told in 1 John 3 verse 4 that that sin is the transgression of God's law. So whenever God's law is broken, we have sin and the only way to deal with the same problem, we need a savior. And that savior is none other than Jesus Christ, who paid the price, a ransom for our sins. Much more could be said. And again, I'm still a little shocked that TYT put this out. <laughs> Balance, well thought out. I mean, 
I was like, are you serious? This is this is strange coming from them. For as much as Trump derangement syndrome is going on over there. <laughs> well, it seems like Anna Kasparian lately, she's been making a lot of sense. She's been making a lot of sense. I don't say I agree with her fully, but she seems to be pushing back against the extreme version of the woke movement. And she noticed that a lot of the left wing policies are somewhat very inhumane and very communistic in practice. And now she's saying enough, you know, hopefully she wakes up fully to the reality of things and stop playing games. Much more could be said. Link in the description below. Like and subscribe to the page. Click the bell icon for more. Share your thought and perspective with me. I want to hear from you. Until next time, have a good one. Bye.